From time immemorial, the city of Istanbul has been a crossroads, a pathway from east to west. Today, for Syrians, a refuge. Of the more than four million Syrians who fled their country, half of them are now in Turkey. Some in camps, but most eking out an existence any way they can. Rusun de Kuri and her family escaped Syria just over a year ago. Today, savings gone. She survives on handouts and the occasional generosity of relatives abroad. It doesn't go far. On this day, just enough for rice and tomatoes. Home used to be a comfortable house in a suburb of Damascus. Now it's a basement suite, two floors down, where the heat has been off for nearly three weeks. Can you describe to people who've never been a refugee what it is like to, to leave the place that you, you love, where you, that you, where you feel you belong? It means that you are not a person. It means you don't exist. It means that no one cares. That's what it means. Rasun does the best she can, but the family is here illegally. There's no money to send the younger children to school. Her older kids, 15-year-old Shergo and 17-year-old Havin, have had to join the underground economy. Ten hours a day, six days a week, in a clothing factory. Sweatshop work. Our life is about waking up, going to work, and at night we come back home to sleep. That's our life. We need to work for long hours. And that's the hardest thing that we face here in Turkey. Life used to be so much better. In Damascus, they were part of the Kurdi family, sprawling, close, prosperous. Rasoon's husband, Muhammad, was a barber. They lived a good life until the war. Fighting between government forces and rebels chased them from Damascus. In the countryside, it was ISIS they came to fear. They were anxious for their children in particular, who witnessed things no child should ever see. When the suicide bomber blew himself up, we saw body parts and bits of flesh fly everywhere. There were several legs on the ground. My friends were hit by a shrapnel, and there was blood everywhere. It was very scary. In 2014, the family made the heartbreaking decision to leave their country and join the flood of refugees to Turkey. By then, Istanbul was already awash in desperation. Rasoon and Mohammed were soon joined by Mohammed's younger brother, Abdullah, and his family, including the baby, Alan. Work was hard to find, and the brothers struggled. But the Kurdis had one thing other refugees didn't. In Canada, in Vancouver, they had a sister who was willing to sponsor them. Hello? Tima Kurdi filed the paperwork last spring. The plan was to bring Mohammed and his family to Canada first. Rasoon was pregnant again. Once they were safe, she'd bring Abdullah and his family. When we are almost in March, we send letter and application. We send it, right? I went to Mohammed and said to him, Please give me a time. I know you guys are desperate. Give me more time. But time ran out. In June, the Kurdi's application was rejected. When Canada turned us down, we were heartbroken because we are peaceful people. We want our children to go to school. We want to have a life. We are like other people. We just need to live our lives. So after Canada said no to us, we changed our plan and Mohammed went to Germany. With little money, there was really only one way to get to Germany. 
and that was to join the thousands braving the Mediterranean to first get to Greece. The first brother made it safely. Then it was Abdullah's turn, but he didn't want to leave his young family behind. And so, early one morning, September 2nd, he did what so many Syrians have done. He paid a smuggler to take them to a boat. The boat turned out to be a raft. The crossing should have taken 40 minutes, but they never made it. By the end of that day, the entire world would know of the tragedy. He called me in the morning. I had sent my kids to work. He called me and said, Husun, my wife and kids are dead. I said, Abdullah, no, don't say it. Don't say it. I was in shock that how could this happen to him? I, can, I call Kosun in uh, Turkey. The, min, she did, the minute she answered me, and she is uh, crying. And I start screaming at her, just give me the news. Mm -hmm. And she said, um, It's still too hard to talk about. It's never gonna be easy, never, never. Abdullah phoned her and he lost his wife and two kids. And I said, three of them. Where is Abdullah? And she said, I have no idea where is he. He used somebody else's phone and he said, I lost my family. I'm standing in front of three body right now at the hospital. I will call you back. Of all the terrible images to come out of Syria after four years of civil war, it was that picture of a little boy that finally pierced the world's indifference. Syria's refugee crisis now had a face and a name. Two-and-a-half-year-old Alan Kurdi, the boy on the beach. That picture was something. It changed. It changed everyone worldwide. It touched millions of people's hearts. How do you feel about that? I feel, again, if I go back to the first phone call with Abdullah, he was screaming and he said, God, I want the world to wake up. Enough pain, and I hope this will wake up the world. And I hope they will save the rest of the refugee. And he said, my son was the wake-up call. Two and a half months later, tragedy has turned to hope, at least for Rusun. In the weeks that followed, Canada asked the family to resubmit their refugee application. November 10th, they got the word. All of them, including the new baby, have now been approved. Hello. Hello. These days, it's all she and Mohammed can talk about. He's still in Germany at a refugee center. This is as close as he can get to baby Sherwan, who he's never seen. And to the promise that keeps them all going now that soon they will be reunited, a family once again. When we come back, the family gets a visitor, the father of the boy on the beach, 
remembers. I remember my wife and children. My wife yelling, save the children, save the children. For the Kurdi family in Istanbul, salvation came November 10th in the form of an email. Canada was now prepared to accept the family as refugees. But then, just three days later, this. In an instant, it was like that picture of the boy in the beach never happened. These were the new images of the Syrian crisis. Instead of opening hearts, they threatened to close them. And like refugees everywhere, Rasoon had new cause to worry. When you saw what happened in Paris, what did you think? What was your reaction? My heart ached for them because they're innocent people and didn't deserve what happened to them. But are Syrians terrorists? For five years, Syrians have been facing terrorism. The Syrian people are not terrorists. The Syrian people are victims of terror. The Kurdis are alone in Istanbul, but today they get a visitor. It is Abdullah, the father of the little boy who drowned. He's here to see the family before they leave. It's been less than three months since he lost his own family. It's a day he still has trouble talking about. I remember my wife and children. My wife was yelling, save the children, save the children. And I said, take care of yourself and I will save them. I could have saved them, but she was panicking, and I was panicking. May she rest in peace. Abdullah buried his wife and children back in Syria. But the house the family lived in has been decimated, and now Abdullah has no real home. He's decided he no longer wants to go to Canada. That dream, like all his others, died on that Turkish shore. Is there part of you that blames Canada for what ultimately happened? After the tragedy, I thought, if they didn't turn us down, we wouldn't have to travel by boat. But then Canada had an election, and its refugee policy changed. When I heard that they accepted 25,000 refugees, I was very happy the policy had changed. My family is gone, but they opened the door for others. That's how I see it. Back in Vancouver, Tima is getting ready for the day Rosun and her family arrive. I just, I'm so excited. The first thing I said is the baby. Ottawa has assured her they'll be here soon. But so much has happened since she first tried to bring them to safety. She worries things could still go wrong. I don't want to think about it. I just want to keep preparing and be... There is hope. I don't want to even think about... I can't take it anymore. I can't. I can't. Not again. Not again. Not to them. It's not fair. It's, we've been through a lot already. As she prepares to leave Istanbul, Rasoon understands what has happened here. Because Abdullah lost his children, hers now have a chance at a brighter future. It's a hard truth that complicates what should be joy. I have sadness in my heart because when I see Abdullah, I can't show him that I am happy because I am going to Canada. 
I have to show him that I feel his pain. I feel his grief. He is shattered. He is lost because he lost what he cared for most. A part of him, most of him, is dead. These are the last pictures of young Alan Curdy alive. Filmed by his mother just months before they drowned. Today, Abdullah devotes himself to helping children of other refugees. He has a dream, he says, to one day build a school in the shape of a lifeboat and to name it for his son, Alan. This project is making me forget a little, and it's making me happy to do good for others. Alan! Alan! I lost my family. The poor and the needy are my family now. 